Good morning. Welcome to another Wednesday devotional. I'm Rick. This is Justin. Uh, let's begin with our off subject question this morning. Um, you know, there's a show on TV called Dirty Jobs, mm -hmm. and Mike Rowe goes all around the country finding these really just horrible jobs to have to, uh, to, to do. And so our off subject question is maybe what's the dirtiest job or the messiest or nastiest job that maybe you remember ever having? Well, I got it narrowed down to two in my mind. Like as soon as I read it, the first two things that popped in my mind. One of them, when I was in high school, I used to help a guy um, put down hardwood floors. And so we were doing uh, the hardwood floors in the basement for this, for this man who had two big Great Danes who lived down in the basement. I don't think he ever took them out to um, use the bathroom. Ooh. And so we had to remove all that carpet that was down in that basement. So you got all this carpet and it stained and it smells and there was even like mold underneath it was so bad. I, I remember like showering for hours afterwards to get that smell out. And then the other time was when I was in Africa. Um, we had this big chicken house. We had like 600 layers and it flooded. And so we had all, it, water got into the chicken house. So we had the wet chicken manure. And it was pretty thick and we had to shovel all that out it was that was pretty disgusting too we'll so, start calling you mike Rowe. <laughs> both of those are pretty bad <laughs> those are pretty dirty jobs yeah. everything yeah when I, when I was in high school uh and even through college um i worked in the produce department at a grocery store mm -hmm. and um it was a a big produce department i mean we we sold a lot of produce that's kind of what we were known for and everything and uh you know we would get in all the lettuce and we'd get in all the uh, tomatoes and all, all the different vegetables and stuff like that. And when you go to the grocery store, they're all look real nice and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of times, you know, some of that stuff is bad yeah. and you have to stick your hand down in rotten cabbage and, uh, rotten, nasty lettuce and all that kind of stuff. And I remember having to do that all the time and everything. In fact, for, for several years, I would not eat a salad <laughs> because I'm telling you, I, I have dealt with some of the grossest lettuce yeah. you've ever seen in your life. And, uh, and so it, it just kind of, I just couldn't stomach a salad knowing, you know, what I had been dipping my hands in and everything. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you today for all that you do for us, the wonderful way in which we are blessed. Father, we just thank you for the love that you have for us in the sending of your son, that Jesus was willing to come, that he died that atoning death on the cross, that we can have the hope of eternal life. Father, we just thank you for um, the church, and we pray your blessings upon Spanish Fort. We ask you, Lord, to bless our elders uh, as they are making decisions and are uh, looking for wisdom, Father, from you to be able to make those decisions that would best lead us. Father, thank you for our time together today as we look into your word. We pray, God, that we will always search the scriptures that we can understand better exactly what it is that you want from our lives. Oh, we ask all this in the name of Jesus. And amen. Yeah. Our text today, we actually have two of them. We're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and then we're going to uh, turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And these two texts uh, are writings of Paul, and I believe that uh, they, they kind of relate to each other. At least we're going to connect the dots. 1 Corinthians 9, beginning verse 24. Do you not know that in a race that all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning verse 7, he said these words, Having nothing to do with godless and silly myths, train yourselves in godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. In those first words in 1 Corinthians 9, Paul makes the statement, I discipline my body. What do you think he means by that? I think he's talking about the fact that he uses spiritual exercise or or spiritual disciplines to protect himself against physical desires. Discipline 
is a, it's an activity uh, within our power. Um, uh, something that we can do in order that we can obtain or be able to do something that previously we weren't able to do. Mm-hmm. And, and so Tom Landry was the coach of the Dallas Cowboys and, and um, he made this statement. He said, the job of a football coach is to make men do what they don't want to do in order to achieve what, they all, what they've always wanted to be able to do. So for, I think for Paul, the idea of disciplining his body or disciplining his self is so that he will be able to, um, as you said, not only avoid maybe bad things, but to be able to accomplish some of the things that he wants to do. And that kind of fits the context here. So maybe the, the question that that leads to is really the purpose of this discipline that, that Paul is talking about here. You know, no, he's, he's using athletes here, but whether it's athletes or if you're in school taking a test or you have a big interview, we prepare beforehand. Um, it's not something that we usually walk into unprepared. No, no athletes is going to run a marathon and, you know, be sitting on the couch 24-7 all the way leading up to it. You, you have to train yourself to prepare yourself to either succeed and to also stay away from the things that, that may arise. When those temptations come up, and when you've practiced these spiritual disciplines, then it's easy to, to know what to do and how to handle those situations because you're already disciplined in that. Yeah, the, I think the purpose of spiritual discipline is transformation, is to, is to change us and um, to you know bring about a renewal of the of the whole person here from the inside out that manifests an outward activity and everything you know sometimes i think we do it backwards we 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 try to do the outward part but we've never changed the inward part and in order to change that it requires some discipline he, he mentions the word godliness and in the in, in the text from First Timothy, that's the end goal is to be like God. How do we get there? Well, it's not by just changing some behavior; it's by changing us on the inside. And to change the inside requires a a, a great deal of of discipline on our part. Um, so maybe that kind of leads into this thought: the the difference between the idea of spiritual disciplines and maybe just some spiritual characteristics out there Mm -hmm. well spiritual discipline is something that you work at it's not something that you may already be good at it may be something that you're not good at and it requires you to work and continue to get better or a lot of times when we talk about characteristics it's things that we already obtain that we already are good at well they're a nice person or they're a patient person those things are good but a lot of things those times sometimes those things come natural to an individual disciplines are actually when you get in you work to get better at different things Disciplines about activities and not just an attitude, mm-hmm. and, and, and so disciplines are things that we practice. Uh, they're not just like some sort of characteristic that we may manifest in our mm-hmm. life. And like you said, you know, when you think about the fruit of the spirit and all those different things, and we've talked about that before in here, the the um, some of those are natural to us. Some of those we do better than others or whatever the idea of discipline is is that it's hard mm-hmm. it requires an effort it's a it's a practice it's not something that always just comes uh you know uh, natural to us i think the the temptation though is is to turn it into a in in some type of to-do list mm-hmm. and and we can't do that uh it's there to help us and to help us uh, to grow so having said all that you know what do we really talk about when we talk about spiritual disciplines, what are some of the practical disciplines that maybe, maybe come to mind? Well, there's tons of books out there. If you're, never, if you're ever looking for one to read, there's tons of them about spiritual disciplines. Right. But I think a lot of them they have in common are a lot of times uh, prayer, um, fasting, um, source of some, however you want to word it, some kind of time of meditation or silence where you dwell on God's word, um, study, worship, um, you know, all those kind of fall in line with that spiritual discipline. Sure. Things that you're doing to draw your attention and your focus back to God and your relationship with Him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- there's there's a long list, mm-hmm. and uh, and interesting enough, most all of them are things that we see Jesus manifesting in His earthly mm-hmm. life. 
that was there to help him. And, and, and these disciplines are not meant as a punishment. They're meant to help us mm -hmm. and everything. Um, you know, I, I, uh, we often think of, you know, study and pray. That's the, that's the easy default answer yeah. to everything, you know. But there's so many others, and you mentioned several of them that are beyond just the idea of study and prayer. Um, you know, the one I thought of was solitude. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we see Jesus removing himself many times in solitude, and, and, and he spent time in prayer and fasting. Uh, not just the prayer. You mentioned the fasting part. We don't, we don't talk about that a whole mm -hmm. lot, but it, that is a spiritual discipline that's there. And of course, worship. And a lot of times, we don't see worship as a discipline, but it is. It's mm -hmm. there to, to, to help us. Um, he ends uh, this this first verse that we read by talking about this idea of being disqualified. What do you think he's talking about there? I think he's talking about not being, not winning the race, or losing his salvation, or not obtaining the goal of heaven. There, you know, the idea that if you are not practicing discipline and you're spiritually lazy, it's eventually going to lead to sin, and then sin separates us from God and it hurts our relationship. And ultimately, you can't win the race with sin in our lives. I think that's kind of the, the thought process that he's making there. Yeah, and in addition to that, I think he's touching on the idea of being successful in winning people to Christ. Mm -hmm. that, that was a big thing for Paul. That, mm -hmm. That's what Paul really was all about and everything, his ministry and everything. And so uh, I think when he sees uh, being disqualified is maybe not obtaining the goal of, of trying to be successful in his ministry, which is something that he's not assured of and mm -hmm. none of us are, um, and we're not promised in being able to win others to Christ. It, but if we don't take care of our own spiritual well-being, if we don't discipline ourselves, it's going to be a hard for us to be successful mm -hmm. in, in whatever ministry or whatever uh, winning of souls that we try to take on and everything. Uh, spiritual disciplines are something that I'm not sure that we spend enough time on. Uh, talking about and thinking about and the importance be especially when the end goal as he mentioned is uh, is godliness so I hope this has challenged you maybe look further into uh, spiritual disciplines and maybe specifically look at some of them and talk about them um, as you study and look through uh, God's word let's end with a word of prayer our Father in heaven, you're such an awesome, amazing guy, and we're so thankful for all the many ways that you bless our lives. But Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have that we can study more about your word. Lord, we pray that you would bless all of us as we continue to strive to go closer to you and closer to one another. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with Spanish Fort and the church, um, continue to be with leadership, continue to be with everyone as, as things are starting to open up more and more, that you would give us the safety and the wisdom to proceed and continue to do the things that would glorify you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.